Frugal Cottage where we talk all things money to help you on your financial journey. And today's video is an update on my dividend investment journey and I've been meaning to make this video for quite a while now but I'm not going to lie, it's a bit disheartening when I look at the numbers and look back but I'm going to share what it looks like now. Um, and if you're new here, welcome. I used to talk a lot about early retirement and dividend investing and then my life has changed and now I'm kind of looking at how to kind of bring that back into my life. If you're not new here, you'll know that these numbers are going to look really different and I hope that I show that just because they're different now, there is always a chance that I can get it back to what it used to be, if that makes sense. But I thought I'd share, lots of people have requested that I do these again and I didn't realise the impact that they had, I guess. Lots of people said that they used to watch these and it gave them the confidence to start their own investing. Now, obviously, everything I share in this is not investment advice. It's just my own financial journey. And like I said, I found this video or the kind of the preparation for this video um, really disheartening because I was, or we were, I guess, because it was a joint effort. We're doing really well. The, the 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 momentum of investing was starting to show, and the the numbers reflected that. And we were starting to reap the kind of rewards of that in terms of that snowball. And now I feel like I honestly feel like I'm just straight back at the beginning, like eight years ago when I first started investing, which is a long time to have lost, I guess. Now I'm not at the start again. I'm not starting with zero and I'll explain that in a second. I'm not starting with zero knowledge like I have all of the knowledge and experience of how I've invested so far and I don't claim to be any kind of expert, obviously. But I'm not starting from zero in that respect either. But as I'll show in a minute, the numbers so far for 2024 are kind of the numbers I was getting when I really, really first started back in 2016. I've shared this journey in videos for quite a long time now. So there's a whole playlist of um, dividend investments and dividend income if you want to go and look at those and you'll see just how far I've fallen, so to speak. But I thought I'd share because I think it's important to show as well that no matter what happens and how we think our journey is going to go, there is absolutely still the case that you can kind of turn that around and it's okay to have to start over you know lots of people do and it's not I keep having to remind myself that there's no there's no point now because it's not the numbers that I would be able to do and I still can't save anything in the investments in themselves and but there is a point because someday I will be able to and someday there will be that shift in momentum again and for now I just have to kind of go with what I've got so I guess this video in some ways is is for me as well as you and um, but what I first thought I would share rather than the dividend is is actually what I currently have in my investment portfolio now I have my investments within a stocks and shares ISA with Hargreaves Lansdowne and I really recommend that as a platform the app's also really good on my phone for that so I'll leave a link below down to there if you want to have a look I really recommend them as a service as someone who's used those like like I said for I've been doing this for eight years now and really happy with their kind of their entire platform and the app now that I use as well. But I thought I'd share with you first what I've got in terms of my holdings in my ISA, which again look very different to what they used to. So this is my entire stocks and shares ISA holding that is left. And again, if I compare that to the amount of companies and funds I had just last year to now, and I've spent quite a lot of money renovating my house you will know that if you've watched the video on my new house I spent a lot of money in this house to make it livable for us and also I have had to use my investments for so this is what I'm left with so Aviva is one of my favorite companies to hold I've had them in my eyes for a long time now again remember I'm not recommending that you buy these this is just what I hold and what I do and I've, I tried my best to keep on to those because they pay quite a good dividend and that's paid in May, so next month's video will be much better in terms of what I've actually earned. BAE Systems, again, are a relatively new one in the grand scheme of things of my investment journey, but I've kept those. Legal and General Group have been in there, again, a long time now. And I've got calculations as what I would need to hold, say, in Legal and General Group, for it to pay me £100 in dividends, or £250 in dividends, because they pay twice a year, all that kind of stuff. So there is... There is, I feel like I'm ready to kind of step back into the investment world and the journey. I haven't been in the right mindset for quite a long time now. Anyway, so Sage Group, I've had to sell quite a lot of those. 
SSE, I haven't sold any of those, but I haven't added to those either. And then the, the majority of the funds have gone, if you see there. I used to own, I think, six different funds. I now currently only have the Vanguard FTSE UK or share index, so that's all of them. And I have sold most of my holding that. I have 17 shares left in that, or, but I used to have nearly 60. So again, in terms of doing income, all of that is much reduced because I've had to sell so many things to get the money because I needed the money out of there, basically. And yeah, real life gets in the way, but I'm hoping that this shows that real life really does get in the way, but it's there's always time and there's always space to kind of turn around and and get back on, you know, get back on the, the journey, even if we even if it feels like we're starting again from scratch. So they are my current holdings. Again, none of this is financial advice. I hold these in my stocks and shares ISO with Harvey Lansdale and I'll leave a link below to that. Now I'm going to share with you my dividend income for 2024 so far and I'm not going to lie, this hurts a bit compared to the numbers I was talking about before. I've just shown you that I have not got as many holdings as this anymore and the reason my GlaxoSmith client is in there, for example, is because they paid out in January and so I've left in there to kind of add to my spreadsheet but I no longer hold them. And Trig, for the same reason I had some of those, but I decided to sell those as well, but they are in there for now but there won't be any more dividend income from those after that. So you can see that January there was £15.54. February, so Sage Group. Oh, I'm Vodafone again. This is in here because it paid me in February, but I no longer own the shares, but I owned them. I guess this is a good thing about dividends. I own them when the dividend like holding date passed. So although I no longer own the shares because I had them at a certain point, it still paid out. So you can see again, so the numbers the numbers are so small. So in January I got £15.54, February £25.61 and March £15.69. And for the first time in literal years, I've got a zero for the month of April. So I've got a zero month and I haven't had that in a long time. And that's what I mean when it, it is disheartening. I've worked really hard to get, or I had worked really hard to get my portfolio where it was, where it was starting to feel like I was making some kind of difference. And now I'm back to zero months again, which hasn't happened for, like I say, a long time. And if I switch to the overview page, so like, look here, the last time I had a zero month, let's see, was November 2020. And that's because it was COVID times and that was all a bit strange. And now, if you look what it was a year ago, so this is... January of this year versus January of last year, like look at the difference. Can you see why it's been a bit of a difficult video to make? I'm so, I am gutted that this is what it looks like now and I, I, I'm going to have to work for a long time to get it back and obviously we all know if you've got any idea about investing that it's time in the market and I feel like I've lost eight years worth of time because of what's happened and I obviously can't get that eight years back because that's not how time works and yet I'm still looking at the numbers and like look so 162 pound and then 15 pound this year 72 pound 25 pound it you know none of these are going to be anywhere near the same as last year's may so this is may 402 pound that's insane 402 pound but this year i don't this year i, I don't know what it'll be because i don't like to work out beforehand because I, I kind of like the surprise of it but it's let me tell you it's not gonna be anywhere near that and i just when I look back at how much growth there has been throughout my dividend, so this, this is just a spreadsheet I use to track all of my dividend income over time. And there are different graphs and different sections and quarterly reports and things like that on it. I just feel, it's just, it just makes me feel a bit sad that this is the state I find myself in. However, I know that the only person that can change that is me. So in some shape or form, I'm trying, and I've got a video coming about this, in increasing my income so that I can do things I invest again so that I can give back so that I can give my boys the life they absolutely deserve and so the dividend income journey is just part of that so I'm going to stop rambling there because I've shared what my holding is I've shared what I've got so far and I've also shared just how different that looks and how different that will continue to look and I am I, you know you can probably tell by the sound of my voice I am disappointed where with where this is and all my projections and early retirement things, if I look at them now, it like it seems ridiculous because there's unless something miracle wise happens, like I suddenly 
get given loads of money. Unless I come into some money somehow, I am not going to A, be able to retire early, I don't think, but also B, not continue in the same shape I have been. But that's okay, that's that's another video that's coming up soon about that. So this is my dividend income report for 2024 so far. So I normally do them monthly, so I might do a monthly one in May because I think that that will probably be better in terms of money because Aviva, for example, pays out in May. And I know that I've tried to keep that one because that's a good payment. So I will be back in May with the dividend income report individually. But for now, this is my dividend income report for the, the whole of 2024 so far. And like I said, all of my investments are with Hargreaves Lansdowne. And I'll leave a link below to their service because I really recommend that if you are looking for a new provider. But yeah, let me know how your dividend income journey is going. I bet it's going better than mine. And if you've not started, let me tell you that it is absolutely now is the time to start because it, as you can see, we can build these numbers together along the way. And as always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you again very soon.